Uh, hi there, uh, my name is Anthony. I'm going to be talking about how technology in the classroom is detrimental to overall student success. Now, before I get started, I would like to clarify a couple of things, like what exactly do I constitute as technology in the classroom? Uh, and, you know, because there are classes, like computer science classes, or a class, you know, dealing with software that, you know, you obviously need a computer, so, you know, you can't really rule that out. What I'm talking about mostly, like, consists of like tablets and laptops used as a convenience, like taking uh, notes during class or using Google as a, uh, like to research something instead of looking at a book. So, you know, now that that's over with, now that I clarified that, uh, I'm gonna go through why technology leads to less retention in class, uh, why classroom technology unnecessarily increases uh, school spending, and why uh, K through 12 students, uh, what's it called, uh, just do not need uh, any more screen time than uh, what they already get. And uh, just real quick, another thing that I forgot to mention is that uh, the schools that I'm referring to are the, uh, I'm referring to K through 12 because many of my points do roll over to uh, college classes, but not all of them do, so I'm gonna stick, it, uh, stick to uh, K through 12. So my first point, uh, technology leads to less student retention in class. Um, you know, distractions are everywhere, and especially with our mobile phones and uh, laptops. You know, even Richard told us to uh, put our phones away, you know, just in case we're tempted to look. Um, so, uh, Common Sense Media actually uh, interviewed a, or surveyed a large group of teens, uh, and two thirds of those teens uh, who multitask, or, you know, I like to refer it as uh, get distracted by um, texting, using social media, looking at videos while doing homework. Uh, they state that they don't think that's going to affect like their quality of work, uh, but in fact it does. Uh, a Sage uh, Journal uh, had 54 students uh, outline and write an essay, um, and they split them into three groups. So one of the groups was uh, interrupted during the outlining phase. Another group was interrupted during the actual body, you know, while they were writing the body of the of the essay, and another group just wasn't uh, distracted at all. And these distractions would happen every three minutes and would last for a minute. And uh, instructors would just ask like uh, trivia questions, just random trivia questions that just didn't have anything to do with it. Um, so what they found out is that obviously um, the people that were uh, interrupted uh, tended to do a lot worse uh, in terms of their uh, essays. They say uh, quality of work was significantly uh, reduced in both interruption conditions when compared to, non to the non-interruption uh, condition. The number of words produced was significantly reduced when participants were in interrupted during the writing of the essay, but not when outlining the essay. So, um, basically, uh, you know, I haven't done a piece of homework without, you know, pulling out my phone, you know, checking uh, what's going on, you know, if I have a message or something. So, our quality of work has very much diminished and in turn, it lowers our standards for the work that we're submitting, uh, which again is very detrimental to to our success, you know, outside of school. Uh, my second point is that classroom technology un unnecessarily increases school spending. So a lot of K through 12 schools are now trying to implement like uh, everybody have an iPad, you know, everyone have an, uh, a laptop computer. And with iPads, and specifically, uh, I was actually able to see the pricing for. Uh, you know, what they charge schools. So normally, a iPad mini uh, would cost uh, $379, and schools would could get a 10-pack for $3,740. Um, or, yeah, so each iPad, uh, in turn, would receive a 50-minute uh, discount. So multiplying that, uh, my high school tried to do this, so multiplying that by uh, 200 to accommodate, to, uh, accommodate 2,000 students, resulted in a price tag of $748,000. That's like five Cal Poly Pomona logos, so that's, you know, that's pretty expensive. <laughs> um, you know, this money could be used in so many other ways. You know, we could be paying our teachers better to motivate them to do, uh, you know, to just get reinvigorated and be excited to teach. We could fund uh, after school programs uh, that would help, uh, you know, struggling math students or struggling any type of students, you know, so, and technology keeps evolving. Like the iPad that I was referencing is a 2015 model for an iPad mini, so that's gonna be outdated pretty soon. Um, and finally, my, my ultimate, uh, my final point is that 
K through 12 students do not need any more time looking at a screen. So uh, Common Sense Media um, asked, uh, stated that 13, uh, sorry, that teens that are 13 to 18 uh, spend about nine hours a day using technology for entertainment, not counting the time they use it for school or homework. And that's a lot. You know, going to school, we're, we're supposed to be taught um, how to use different resources and methods to, to, to truly learn and to truly like produce uh, great results in our homework and stuff. But now, you know, we're just basically using Google as a resource. We're not looking at our books no more. And that's, that's awful, you know. Um, we're trying to get uh, students to use more resources and not just one. Uh, and finally, uh, technology is making kids uh, antisocial. Uh, schools should be a place where, you know, we get to ex expand our social skills, you know, uh, talk and network to students. Because you know, in the college setting or in a work environment setting, that is truly important. Um, but uh, you know, there there was a study uh, conducted by the University of Maryland where uh, where a thousand students in ten countries were asked to not use any form of media for 24 hours. Uh, and this involved like TV and all this sort of stuff. But I'm only going to focus on like technology and phones. Uh, a student from China stated, "I would feel irritable, tense, restless, and anxious when I could not use my mobile phone." When I couldn't communicate with my friends, I felt so lonely as if uh, I was in a small cage in a solitary island. So instead of being able to like talk to our friends and peers like in class, uh, you know, this this person felt like they could only talk to their people or to their friends and their phones. And you know that that's a common case here. Like I feel I don't feel as inclined to talk to you guys because I can talk to my friends at any point in time with my phone. So you know, being social is is truly important and. We're not getting enough of it. And I know I sound cranky, I sound like, you know, I hate technology or whatever, but I'm a computer science major. I love technology, I keep up to date with it. Uh, but I'll be the first one to tell you that I think it's not good in our classes. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Anthony, at the beginning of the speech, you did something that a lot of people do. I think I pointed it out to some folks before. I'm not sure that it was in this class that I did it, but I'm going to mention it uh, for you. Uh, you start the proposition with the word how, and then you start each of your supporting points with the word why, which makes it all sound like it's an expository presentation rather than a declarative statement. So you don't want to say, I'm going to talk to you about how technology in classrooms is uh, undermining uh, student success or is detrimental to student success. You want to say, I'm going to show you that uh, technology in the classroom is detrimental to student success. Don't make it a question and, or don't make it, you know, here's an explanation of something that everybody knows is true. I'm just going to explain it. It's an argument. It's a declarative. And then the same thing for the secondary points. But the proposition's clearly identified. There is a supporting structure that's previewed at the beginning of the speech, so you're doing the mechanics there correct. Uh, it's just the phrasing is one of those things that I, I think people default to because they're trying to sound uh, like they are having a conversation, which I appreciate. But you know what? It's an argument. You've got to take a position, and I, it's much clearer if the sentences are declarative in nature. Now, they're a little bit more declarative in the supporting structure, which I did think uh, helped quite a bit. Um, the data on the first point talks about uh, students and multitasking and how it's a distraction. And you've got uh, one study that found that they were less effective uh, when they did have distractions. I don't know that the distractions were equivalent to the kind of media technology that is being utilized, but uh, I think everybody recognizes that if there's interference in your flow of concentration, it's going to have a negative effect on you. It's not that hard to imagine how technology, whether they're cell phones or tablets, could have that particular effect. Uh, some demonstration of that, it seems like there's got to be more information that supports that position. You've got kind of a minimal amount there. It's good, but I just think it could be 
a little bit more convincing. Uh, on the second issue, when you're talking about costs, uh, you, you explain how you calculated the cost for the one school that you were using as your hypothetical, and then that's perfectly fine. I think that there are probably school districts that have done this that have invested a lot of money, not only in the money for purchasing the products, but also for training, uh, for software programs, for integration, and you know, plus for repair and all that sort of stuff. So there are additional costs that are involved with that. But your answer here seems to be that there are other ways that we could spend the money. Okay, but are any of those other ways more effective? You kind of suggest that they would be, but I don't know that they are. I'd like to think that increased teacher pay would make teachers more effective, but I don't know that that's the case. Um, you know, that you, know, you go from year one when you're being paid X to year two when you're being paid Y, and are you suddenly a better teacher because you're being paid more? I don't know about that. If there was some way that you could incentivize performance things, maybe there would be some consequence there. Otherwise, it just feels like it's a very vague statement on this particular point without a lot of development. Uh, the third point, though, I think is the one where you get the best kinds of arguments suggesting that there's already a large amount of time devoted by students to uh, being on screen, that uh, they that there are problems with their relationships as a consequence. Uh, I thought you, I like the personal example that you used on that. I've been using that for several years. You know, it's just one of those things. It is so different coming into class nowadays than it used to be. I'd come into class, say hi, people would say hi back to me. Somebody would say, how was your weekend? I'd tell them how my weekend was. Somebody would share a joke, we'd all laugh about it. Somebody would talk about the movie they saw or the, the play that they went to or the football game that they were at. And you know, classes felt a little bit different. They were much more social. Now it's exactly like you described. Everybody's on their damn phone. I, I should. Everybody's on their phone. <laughs> and you know, they're interacting with people. They're just not interacting with the people that are right there around them. And, and, and there is a difference there. Now, is that a good thing or a bad thing? I think you, most, you are mostly saying it's a bad thing, and I think that's true. But is there any way you can demonstrate that that's a bad thing? Are we not learning skills? Are we failing in our? This is one of those things. When people say, why do they need to take communication classes, for instance? I, you know, that's not my major. I don't want to do anything about it. It's like the number one thing that businesses look for is the ability for people to communicate effectively with others. And if they're losing that ability, that's a consequence. And I think that there's an argument to be made there that needs to be developed a little bit more. Although you don't want to be developing it a little bit more because you were a little bit over time. All right.